Hi everyone, I'm Tammy from the blog Nutmeg Notebook. This is Tuesday Live with Tom and Tammy, or Tammy and Tom. And Tom's behind the camera right at the moment, but he's gonna come around, sit down at the computer, and he will moderate your comments. And so if you have questions, you can ask us questions. We try to go live every Tuesday at four o'clock, and we always post about it on our Facebook page, Nutmeg Notebook. We also have a blog, nutmegnotebook.com. So we teach people how to cook when they're following a whole food, plant-based, SOS-free lifestyle. What is SOS-free? That's salt, oil, and sugar free. Today, we're super excited because we're doing a really fun segment and we're going to show you, I don't know if they're all of our favorite, uh, kitchen it's, it's utensils and gadgets. More, it's but, probably more than we have time for today. Yeah, because we have so many things that we use in the kitchen that we love. But we're going to share with you some of our favorite kitchen utensils and gadgets. And these are things that, of course, they're not necessary. You don't have to have these things to follow a whole food plant-based SOS free lifestyle. But these things just make our cooking and are eating this way a little bit easier. And I was a, a cook before I became whole food plant-based. I just always have enjoyed and loved cooking and I love kitchen gadgets and utensils. So there you go. So let's get started. Oh, and you guys, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel, click on subscribe and then tap on that little bell that's next, that little bell icon that's next to subscribe because that's how you get notifications oh, whenever we go the, live. Do the thumbs up thing now because then yeah. that will invite more people. Yeah, if you do a thumbs up for us, that really helps our ratings on YouTube. And then YouTube will recommend our shows to other people who also visit other whole food plant-based uh, YouTubers. So we'd really appreciate the help and share this if you would share it. You can share it right now. Click on share, click on like, and that really helps us out. Well, let's get started. So one of my absolutely favorite things in the kitchen are these measuring spoons. And the reason I love them, they are a different shape. As you can see, they are kind of long and skinny instead of round or square. And I love these because these fit down inside of the spice jars. So let me show you, even the one tablespoon will fit down in a lot of spice jars, not all, but a lot. And so what I love about it is it makes it really easy to fill them or to get spices out. Now, this is one that I've made up by myself because I learned this trick from Chef AJ that save your spice bottles as they run out of spices, wash them, and then let's say this is for a, a chili recipe that we really like and I make it all the time. So instead of having to get the spices out on things that you make all the time, one time when you're cooking them, fill about three or four spice jars with the spices and then you don't have to get the spices out every time you go to make that dish. I love that. So anyway, these are super great. They make wonderful gifts. So this one, some of them, some sets come with um, like six spoons, but this one has just the one, two, three, four, five. So you get a tablespoon, you get a teaspoon, you get a half teaspoon, and you get a quarter and an eighth. And so I just really love them. They are the, the so one, fun. The one I have on the gadgets and utensils list shows six different. Yeah, that one I like better, okay. but um, I gave those to Katie. I gave that, that one to our daughter um, because she needed a nice set. So, and also we have these things are on our Amazon affiliate page and you will find them under the favorite kitchen utensils and gadgets segment. We've moved everything over to it, its own little page for what we're doing today. The, all, all the stuff that we talk about today and related items will be in the kitchen utensils and gadgets. The main page was just getting out of control. I had over 200 items on it. And so I'm getting busy now and organizing and, it a little you know, more, putting Make books it with books and, and things that plug in with other things that plug in and, and bowls with bowls, et cetera, storage yeah. stuff. Okay. Let's move on. 
So here we go. <clears throat> this is a little mini whisk and I love these. I have about three or four of these. And so if I'm mixing up, okay, for the Brussels sprouts, Chef AJ's Brussels sprouts that go in the oven that have the balsamic vinegar and the mustard and you make a little marinade. And so this is just perfect for a small like marinade or a salad dressing that you're gonna whip up in a little bowl. It's just, it's great. So love that and I have several of those around. Now this is kind of unusual and I don't use this all the time, but when I do use it, it's so handy and I love it and it's very inexpensive. This is a pineapple cutter and I first learned about this from my, he my friend Heather Goodwin who has the Butterfly Effect Facebook page and YouTube channel. If you haven't watched her, check her out. She's totally amazing. She's plant-based. She's an amazing cook. She has a wonderful weight loss story. And she demonstrated this pineapple cutter because you know what a pain pineapples are to slice and cut up. So you just cut the ends off. Actually, we have a video of me doing it. And you put this on and then you just turn it and it does a nice spiral cut all the way down and then you pull it out and the handle comes off. That's how you get it out of the pineapple. Then you slip this out of the bottom and you have beautiful rings. So I love it. And like I said, I don't use it all the time, but it I, sure is handy when you do use it. And so it far is. as kitchen gadgets goes, that thing, it's just a few dollars. It's just it's, a few it's dollars. It's like the most inexpensive yeah. little guy and he does such a big chore. And I used to buy the pineapple that was already cut at Costco or Sam's Club because I really hated cutting them. And so now I will buy the fresh pineapple and I will use this and cut it myself. And in fact, I did that yesterday. I don't know if you guys saw, but on Facebook, I posted a picture also on Instagram of a fun fruit turkey that I made to take to a potluck yesterday. So check out my Facebook and Instagram page so you can see that. And I used this to cut the pineapple. Have you ever air fried pineapple? Uh, we've mm. grilled it, but yeah, I don't know that I'd want to put something that wet in the air fryer. That would make, mm. it might make a big mess, yes, but yeah. you know, if it's not super wet, try it because fruit in the air fryer is actually really, really good. So I like to take the fresh figs and cut those in half and put those in the Maybe air fryer. Maybe put that accessory tray underneath that's got the wire rack. They have the, That when, would be good if, to catch if, it. If you have one that, yeah. Ours came with a little like a broiler tray with a little rack on tap, on top. And Maybe that do catch. that so it would catch the juice. Otherwise the juices are going to spill onto the bottom and since they'll be high in sugar, they'll probably burn pretty now, fast. If you're looking to caramelize it, I would maybe do pan searing on a... Yeah, I like stove. the, the stovetop uh, grill pans for things like that. But we do, we've done peaches, we've done apples, but the apples, mm. even, even apples yeah. cut in half are messy yeah. in the air fryer. And I kind of like to not do things that are going to really make the air fryer dirty. And speaking of air fryer, we did, last week we did a segment all about our air fryer, our Breville Smart Oven Air and our Crisp Lid. So you can check that out if you're interested in seeing what we do. Now this is my most used knife out of the knife block. I just, I love this knife. And this is the Wusthof seven inch chef's knife. And it has, what do they call these? Do you know this, how it's made here? This is supposed to help things from sticking, like when you're slicing a tomato or an onion or, or anything. It helps everything the to word de slide off. Detent comes to mind. Detent. I don't know, if, I don't I don't know, know. If that's accurate. It could be. I don't know. But we were uh, we were traveling. We were in Oregon, and we were on vacation, and we went into a kitchen, a kitchen gadget, gadget store. Gadget store because, dangerous, dangerous, danger. <laughs> because whenever we find one, wherever we are, we have to go in and look because you never know. You might find something really cool that you absolutely have to have. And so we found this knife in that store and it was well worth the money. I use it for everything for, you know, chopping and slicing and it's just, it's fantastic. So my favorite, this is my favorite knife. It's my go-to for everything. And the reason we got this size is this one fit my hand quite nicely because my hands aren't big. Um, and so this was just a comfortable, nice fit for me. And I, just, I love how it, it works. It's great. Now these 
are these little uh, scoops. And I don't know, is there a more professional name for them? And I have them in two sizes and I really, really like these. So if I'm making like mini muffins, they're, this bigger one is just perfect for getting the quinoa banana oat muffin mix and putting it in the mini muffins. Oh, we didn't get out any of our silicone. Um, that would be another thing to show them, our silicone mm -hmm. um, bakeware that we use. So when I'm making the dehydrated cookies, which we do finally, we have the, Tom's got the video done, I just need to make the blog post for it, but it works really good for that too. I, I like it because everything comes out the same. So you get the same size. So when you're baking or cooking, you know, that's important that everything's the same size so that it all cooks at the same all time. All of the sizes of these are all in one place um, on the library here in, okay. that, get in that gadget category. Yeah. When you click so, on it, it shows you all of the sizes. So. I also like to make take veggie burger mix, whatever kind I have mixed up, and I like to use this and make them into to balls and this makes them all even so I don't have to guess. Make them into balls and then I like to put them on the tray for the air fryer and then air fry them. And they're so good because they get crispy crunchy on the outside but they're warm and soft on the inside and they just taste super amazing. So that's really fun. So now so I'm- You wanna I'm, trade some stuff out here? Yeah, I'm ready for the what next. Do you wanna, what do you wanna do next? Here. Um, how about these things? Oh, oh, or actually, let's do more of the utensil stuff. So okay. spatulas. Okay. I'm going to hand you things. like three things and you hand me some stuff back. Okay. We have so much stuff we couldn't fit it all on here. It would be a mess. It would be a mess. Okay. And you did this already? I did that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so this is an OXO vegetable peeler. It's my favorite one, I love it. It has the kind of a, a wide handle on it, so it's really comfortable. If you're having to peel a lot of potatoes, which you might be peeling a lot of potatoes for mashed potatoes for the holidays, uh, I love it, carrots, whatever I'm having to, to peel. I just, I really like this one, it works really well. So that's the OXO, very inexpensive. This is the Pampered Chef uh, can opener. And what is what do they call this? Safe Edge. Safe it's a Edge. Safe Edge Cut. So uh, this one is old. We just realized today that we've it's had like it 20. for over 20 years. Is that a good testimony? So, so the one that's listed on, and it's the same brand, Pampered Chef, in the gadgets page. It just looks different. It's the modern version of this antique one. Um, and so what it does is it, when it cuts the lid, it cuts it in a way that the, the lid on a can can be put back on. And so if you're not gonna use all of, let's say you open up tomato sauce, for instance, then you can put the lid back on and the edge of it is not sharp. It's a safe edge really important if you have small kids in the house or grandkids that way if they get into the trash which our, our little grandson is just he's a year old and he's fascinated with the trash can right now and that way they won't get cut so great little can opener um, you know they're a little bit different to use but you'll catch on quick now these are potato mashers and I'm showing you this kind because this kind I don't like and we should, I don't know why we still have this. This is the one that we got 40 years ago when we were first married. And I did have it for years and years and years. We could actually just pitch that. Or maybe we'll give it to the kids to play with in the playhouse. But we've had it for 40 years. How I can know. we let go of it? We can, trust me, we can. So this is a KitchenAid one. You can see how this is made differently. I love this one. This is great. So I use this for making my garlic mashed potatoes. We have a video on how to make them. They're made in the instant pot and you don't have to drain the liquid. That's what I love about it. It's super easy. Garlic mashed potatoes. So look that one up. And I also, I, like if I'm making something with mashed sweet potatoes, then I use this. And for my quinoa banana oat muffins, which requires mashed uh, banana, then I use this for that as well and easy enough for kids to use it our three-year-old granddaughter sweet pea uh, helps me mash the bananas and she uses this and she thinks that's great so 
So I love this masher. Oh, also for my refried beans. And that's in our cooking webinar, the Mexican Fiesta cooking webinar. And that is the only thing that we sell is the, that webinar. But that's available on our um, page. If you go to Nutmeg Notebook, click on shop and you'll see it there. And I think it has like on 10. On the blog. On the blog. blog. Yeah, on the blog. There's like 10 recipes. I show you how to make them. You get a PDF on, to show you uh, the recipes and you can print those as well. So this also works to make those um, refried beans and it's fantastic. Oh, we haven't made those in a long time. We need to make those soon. Thank you. Then we have to talk about rubber spatulas because these things save me. I love these. They're so amazing. So this was the first one in this kind of shape that I bought. And this is a um, wonderful rubber spatula. I think they're heat safe, so you can use them when you're cooking, either in the Instant Pot or on top of the stove. And you know they come in a bunch of different shapes. Some are more like a spoonula. Like this one is Tom's absolute favorite. So we use these for cooking, stirring, scraping things out of containers. They come in lots of different sizes. As you can see, these three actually come three together. I love how small they are because if you're trying to get things out of jars, they're perfect for that. Uh, this, so this one is double, double sided, double ended. This one, love it. And I like these better than the ones with the wood handles because you know the ones with the wood handles, if you leave them in the water, then the wood starts to get yucky and the these do not. So I love them. They come in lots of different sizes and they come in different colors as well. Then this one is for the blender. So can you see how it's angled? And it works great in the high powered blenders. So you can get down in there and scrape the sides. So that's perfect. You need to have that because when you're using like your Vitamix or your Blendtec, you know how you, you get disturbed, at least I do, about all the stuff that's left in the bottom that you can't get to. Well, these really help you. And then Vitamix has come out with this one, which goes down inside. You can see, see how it's shaped here. It has a different shape. I don't know, I'm trying to turn it different ways so you can see it. And so it gets down in there and it will go under the blades actually and you can scrape under the blades to get everything out and this one was made by vitamix for the vitamix and it works great so now when i make cheese sauce or alfredo sauce or my creamy balsamic no oil dressing then i can be sure that i get all of it out of there because you know when you scrape it you're going to get probably about another quarter of a cup of liquid or hummus or whatever you have in there, you're going to get that out. So love that. Love these spatulas. And you can leave them on the edge of the, you know, laying on the edge of the pot for a minute or two if you're in the middle of doing things and they're not going to melt. So that's also a plus because I've melted quite a few things in my lifetime. We just got a question from Jamie on how do we sharpen our, our, um, Mezzaluna okay, knife. well, let me talk about this. Oh, you still have that little guy. Okay. Then you can do that. I thought you were done. And this is just a little inexpensive, I don't know, is this just a couple dollars? This is just a little um, tool for helping you open up citrus. And so it has a little sharp edge here. And so you just score an orange or a mandarin. And then with this little end here, and then you use the tip of it to get the peel started, and then it helps you to get the peel off, which makes it really, really easy. And then there's also this little guy here. I've never used that part, but it's so you can I make- I use it on oranges. Do you? Oh, no, that's no, this, this, this. The part to make a little strip. I, I've never made that, And no. So you can use it you know, on a lemon or you know, any kind of citrus. So I have a few of these, they're great. They just make things easier. So if you don't have a long fingernail or you have a manicure and you don't want to ruin your manicure, then these work really, really well. 
So fun little, like you can even use them for stocking stuffers for yeah. people who love kitchen gadgets. We, so, we, we had one question before we transition here. Okay. Where do you store all this stuff? Yeah, well, okay, so we have a, we, <laughs> I know. And, and she does, she does follow up that she doesn't we, have a big kitchen. But. Okay, well, and we have a pretty, a pretty big kitchen. So one thing is like we have a um, utensil container on our kitchen counter. And so all of the rubber spatulas and all of that stuff goes in that container because that way they're easy we can grab them you know sometimes your hands are a little bit dirty when you're cooking and mixing things up i don't want to have to open up a drawer and so i have a container yeah, i'm gonna grab it sitting Just... up on top with a lot of uh, little things in it so you can do that you know we have organizers in our drawers to separate things and i kind of like to have a, a place for everything and so um there you go. This is just on the back counter. Yeah. And it holds all of these spatulas that we were showing typically stay in here. Right. And so that yeah. works really well for us. And, yeah. and But I, I have to admit, we do have quite a lot yeah. of storage space in our kitchen. Yeah, whisks, so, whisks and wooden spoons and these things. Oh, yeah, things see, we have tons. Go in it's here. almost embarrassing. Yeah. But <laughs> here, here, okay. Out of, out of the picture. You're outing me. You're outing me. Okay. Well, so, also, so people... we do have a we have a pretty big kitchen, but also you know whittle down to the things that you actually use. Like Tom just took a load of stuff today to give away to Goodwill because as we have changed our lifestyle, there are things that we just do not use anymore. And so we are starting to weed those things out so that we just have room for the things that we really do use. And you know, there's some things that you only use once in a while, like the pineapple cutter, but we're hanging on to that because it means I'll buy a fresh pineapple. So, okay, do you want to talk about the knife sharpening stuff? Because that's not my Area Not of expertise. Area of expertise. Okay. I, but Tom is our knife sharpener, and it is, I want to say, it's really important to have sharp knives. It's actually really dangerous when your knives are not sharp to be trying to cut things that are difficult to cut with a dull knife. So when my knives start to get dull, then I'm like, hey, Tom, can you sharpen my knives? So take it away. Okay. All right. Um, Many of you have the Mezzaluna knife, and uh, and Tammy actually prefers this one when she's chopping salads, which she does in her wooden bowl, and then we, uh, can I stand up? And also you can do it in a plastic bowl, not in a stainless steel bowl, because that will do bad things to both the bowl and the blade. You just cut off a little bit. Yeah. Your head's cut off just okay. a little bit. All right, I can <laughs> just be down here. I used to be maintaining this with a simple uh, pocket knife that had a carbon steel um, notch in it and then a ceramic steel, you know, one is for getting the blade back into shape, getting, smoothing out all the chinks and crannies in it. And so very carefully, um, and I, this is a, a knife sharpening glove that you wear when you're not demonstrating. And I would just, on the Mezzaluna, it is difficult because of this curve. And I've getting, been getting a lot of questions on how we do this. Maybe if you could go, if you could do it sideways, you yeah. could see it But I, I didn't really want to be recommending this to people, because this is all I've been doing for Tammy. And then the ceramic notch is the second one, and then that dresses it out and, and finishes, you know, smooths everything out and makes a nice, a nice sharp uh, edge to it. But that's a little too close to the blade. So I recently found uh, uh, this guy on Amazon, and it's it's in the it's in the gadgets page, and this one is is a knockoff for about one third the price of a name brand more expensive one, uh, and I hadn't used it before, so I just wanted to try out the idea. It comes with the same carbon, the carbon V in the middle, so you can just. They can't see that when you're doing. Can you do it kind of yeah. sideways? Is this on screen back here? Yeah. Okay, you can just go like this a few times. Reverse it. And, and then you come over to the ceramic, and then that dresses it out. What do you mean that that dresses it out? Okay, well the ceramic is real fine, 
it's a real fine, so it puts the final edge on it. Mm -hmm. This is a carbon steel. It's actually shaving the metal off and getting out all of the, the damage and the curls and the nooks and the crannies and smoothing it out. And then this puts the final edge on it. And just smooths yeah. it, makes yeah. it And these ones that three, they have three parts, they do have a diamond one here, but that's for ceramic knives. We don't own any ceramic knives. Mm. So I'm using, I'm using the carbon and the fine, and the fine is a white ceramic stone, but the diamond is the one for ceramic blades. There's been some confusion online, I've noticed on that. So I'm using these two. Um, same thing on the Ulu knife. This is the first one. This is actually the one I prefer to use. And again, it's got all these sharp points and stuff on it. So, so we're just going through that carbon steel. I, get, I, ha I have a better time holding it up. I'm just going like this. And then through the ceramic. And then that puts a very nice, and if you do that, you know, once a week or so, that'll keep these nice and sharp and it'll make salad chopping go a whole lot easier. Um, so now we do, we do get some questions sometimes about people ask us if we ever get the white buildup on the mezzaluna or the ulu knife. And that does happen. And it's something from the greens that... It's just al it's calcium, it's alkaline yeah. from the greens. And, yeah. the, and the metal of this... Um, this is the Alaska brand, whatever, uh, Ulu knife. It really grabs whatever this metal is. It grabs that calcium uh, built and it really gets on here. And we have it to builds up on that one. It doesn't so much on the Mezzaluna I've yeah. noticed, but I wash it as soon as I'm done chopping my salad. We use these to make chopped salads in the Holland wood bowl. And I wash it as soon as I'm done doing that. And then I dry it really carefully. You have to be careful and don't put it down in the soapy water. I did that one time and cut my thumb up really bad. So, cause I reached in, forgot it was in there. So I just wash it and then I dry it right away. And they now have, Holland Bowl Mill now has a little shield to store it in, which is really nice. Uh, because people were asking us too, how do we store it? So now it has this, which is really, Nice, so it protects you from the blade if you're gonna put it in a drawer. Prote protects kids from reaching in and grabbing it as well. And then the Ulu came with a little stand, which is really nice. Now so. the, the, there's another knife, the, uh, I put a KitchenAid. You know, this one is, this is the, the blade that comes from the Holland Bowl Mill when you order the bowl with Tammy's um, Numbic Notebook uh, affiliate link, and then they send this free. Um, but if you're not buying a bowl from Holland or don't already have one, I do have a, a KitchenAid equivalent of this that you can get and that's the, the same concept. Yeah, and um, it works really good because I have the KitchenAid Mezzaluna knife at my mom and dad's. Um, they live in Nebraska, we live in California, and so I have it there and I have a, a bowl there for chopping. So when I go there, I have that KitchenAid Mezzaluna and it works Great. In fact, Mom, I hope you're still making those chopped salads if you're watching today. Uh, just a kind of fi a final comment on sharpening. The best way to sharpen your knives is the easiest way for you to, to do it. Um, and if you go on YouTube or Google, you can find hundreds of very elaborate videos, elaborate devices. You can spend hundreds of dollars on sharpeners. I know I've been tempted a couple of times recently. Um, he likes gadgets too. But but the simplest, cleanest, and easiest, this just scared me because I've almost cut myself a few times. So I think something simple like this, especially with the curvature of these blades, is going to be usable and doable. You can get the big stone slabs, uh, the fancy crisscross things, but people, you know, that's just going to stay in the cabinet or a drawer. It's not going to get pulled out. This you can just keep in your kitchen And gadget this doesn't door. take up too much. Yeah. Oh, and, it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's not, uh, it's left or right-handed. Oh, so, that's good to know. So if you want to, if you, if you, uh, you can turn that around. Yeah, that's good. Or if you want to, if you want to just use this by itself and take a risk. No. Wear, wear the knife glove. So anyway, yeah. this is how we sharpen both of these knives. And, it's and this also, came with this? The, this glove comes with this yes. widget in this green box. And I do use these also to dress Tammy's, um, uh, her the, the rest of her Wistoff knives along with the fancy steel thing that you do the chef mm. back and forth business with uh, but she gets them so dull sometimes I got to start out with this carbon steel uh, thing so okay 
Next. So next, I'll talk about this, and then if you want to do the blue choppers, the two blue choppers, okay, get them I'll talk about those as well. Okay. Let's see if we have any questions here. Okay, so this one, this is the Vidalia Chop Wizard. And uh, I originally bought mine at Bed Bath & Beyond, and then I got home and I looked it up on Amazon, and I saw that Amazon had a version that was uh, just a step up for like four or five dollars more. And so I took the one from Bed Bath & Beyond back, and I got this one from Amazon. And what it has that the other one didn't have is this handy dandy little cleaner. If I can pull it off. So, when you use this, if you don't have the one with the little cleaner, the built-in little cleaner, then you have to work at getting everything out between those little grooves, which I think would be a real pain to do. So I got the one that has the little self-cleaning, and it works great. So this comes with three different cutting blades, depending on what you want to do. And I have only used these two. I have not used this one. It says this one is for soft foods like eggs, mushrooms, olives, strawberries, kiwis, peaches, and nectarines. So that's what that one is for. And these two I like. I use these for onions, apples, tomatoes. You can actually do tomatoes in this. So, and I have a wonderful recipe and a video for making fresh salsa and I use this to do the fresh salsa and I even use it to make the um to do the jalapeno peppers because what I like about it is you can do everything in here and make it completely uniform which is wonderful for presentation and uh, it just you know it just looks beautiful so it's really easy to use you just you know put your vegetable on here and then push it down and voila you get beautiful cut veggies and it also it has a measuring on it it says um, up to here is three cups worth which that's really nice too so this just comes in super handy i really like having it and i use it quite a bit so you want to hand me the blue stuff I need the other one. Thank there you. you. Go. Okay, so these were a gift from Chef AJ, and these are from Tupperware, and but you can also get them on Amazon, believe it or not. So you can see this just has a little cutting blade in it. This is the small one, and then this goes on top. And this is kind of like a little, it's a little mini chopper. It's kind of like having a little mini uh, food processor but you don't need electricity. So this is great for taking camping, you know, take it traveling with you. So if you're in a hotel room or an Airbnb, you've got this and it has a little pull string. How cool is that? Isn't that fun? And so this little one, I love to do garlic in it. So on my batch cooking day, when I'm going to be making quite a few things, I'll buy the, I like to buy the peeled, already peeled garlic cloves from Trader Joe's or Whole Foods, and I'll dump a bunch of them in here, have it pretty full, and then I'll just chop it, and then I'll transfer it to a glass jar and dip out of there for whatever I'm making that day, and then I have my garlic chopped for the week as I'm making things throughout the week. So uh, did I say this was a gift from Chef AJ? She gave me you these. Did. And when she gave them to me, I thought, well, I've got a food chopper. And you know, I had a garlic press, and I thought, you know, will I really use these? But you know, since this they were- This one you use a lot. I do all the time. Well, this one I use for onions and peppers too. So this lid will also, Transfer over You don't cry as here. much when you chop them in I there. know, it's true. I don't cry as much. So you see, it has that blade in here too, a larger capacity and works the same way. So I love this for onions, peppers, mushrooms. Um, it's just, it works so good and it holds a lot. So you wanna start with a small amount, you know, and then you can take the lid off and add more and uh, it works beautifully i love it so and then this also comes with hand me that lid if you would please that blue lid and then this comes with a lid 
So if you've chopped a bunch of stuff and you're not using it all and you're going to finish using it later, then you can just pop the lid on there. So that's how that works. And I love this. I use this all the time. It is so great. And like I said, you can travel with it too, which, you know, that is so great because we want to continue to eat healthy even when we're traveling. And we try to get hotel rooms that have a little kitchenette or book an Airbnb so that we can eat healthy while we're there. Okay, what's next? Um, let's talk about these guys right here. Oh yeah, let's do right this. Here. Yeah, and then you can go ahead and put those up here if you want. So I love local spiceries spices. They come in these beautiful jars that are from Italy. I just, oh, this is the cinnamon, which is amazing. The Saigon cassia cinnamon, which it, it even smells sweet, you guys. It's wonderful. So I love them, but guess what? They don't have a little shaker lid on them because they don't want people shaking it over the, a steaming pot of food. That's what Nick told me, and I was like, yeah, guilty as charged, because that steam will cause the spices to um, not be good for as long. So you don't want to have heat or steam or a lot of air get to them. But I sometimes I want to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon over a potato or a, you know, a dessert or something, you know, to make it look pretty. I like that, that little dusting. So what I've done is I just found this little strainer. It's just a little mini strainer. I think it's like $3. And you can just put a little bit of, of cinnamon or whatever you have. And then I just go like this. And then you get that beautiful dusting look. So you can see that there. So that's what I like to do. And I'm not going to waste that cinnamon because it's so amazing. And I'll put it on a sweet potato later. Oh, should I just hand this to you so you can put it over there? Okay, so since we're talking spices, this is a micro plane. Oh, maybe I'll need that plate. Sorry. There you go. Do you feel like Vanna White? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Tom Kramer. See, it was a trick question. It was a trick question. So I love fresh nutmeg. Maybe you've noticed that because my blog is called Nutmeg Notebook. And it's amazing. If you've never had freshly grated nutmeg, you are missing out because it is so full of flavor and just oh the aroma of it is amazing and so I've had I had the little metal grater that I would take the the nutmeg and grate on there we go um, but this works so well Tom got me this this is the microplane one and you just turn it is anything coming out oh I took them out you have to oh. put them in but they're in here you have to show the storage thing They've got, the, you know, they store inside. The, the little, the little uh, guys store, uh, store Put the in there. the other one in there. So I wanted to show them what it looks like. Oh. Okay, so this is... I sabotaged her thing. You did. You sabotaged me. This is what it looks like. It's just this hard little thing. And so you buy a spice jar, and it just comes filled with these. And then you put it in here, and it has the little microplane grinder on the bottom and then this just pushes down on top of it and then voila it just grinds it oh so now i'm going to have fresh nutmeg and cinnamon to put on top of a potato so there it is and it's great oh it just smells so good so and this was inexpensive too and tom just found that on amazon for me a while back and I've been loving it. Here you go. Yeah. Um, Nana Hooper was asking about prices on the, the knives. The KitchenAid knife is like twelve ninety nine on Amazon here. Yeah, we hate to quote prices yeah, because that they, kinda, change. It, they can change at any yeah. time. Um, but today, as of today, the KitchenAid Mezzaluna is twelve ninety nine. Yeah, and then this one is a little bit more, but they're both listed on the Amazon shop in the kitchen gadgets and utensils page. They're also actually on that main influencer page, but that's got two hundred items on it. So I th I think the Mezzaluna is safer to use because it doesn't have those points 
on the end. I just think it's easier to not cut yourself. Now these are a couple different sizes because I have the ramekins, but they're both four ounce ramekins and I love these for so many things. So if when I'm cooking, if I'm getting my spices and everything ready, I can put them in these and or you know if I have jalapeno pepper and garlic and you know need different um, elements to go into a recipe, I can prep these, use them like prep bowls and put everything in here. So they work wonderful for that. They're very inexpensive. You can, we have them on our Amazon page. You can pick them up all kinds of places though. And they're wonderful. They can hold a little bit of condiments. So, you know, we make our own ketchup and barbecue sauce and those kinds of things. So they're wonderful just to put a little bit of condiments in. Or if you have something that's maybe a little bit more runny that you're gonna put on a plate of food, then you can go ahead and put it in here if you don't want it to you know, run into the other food. Also, I like to make little mini desserts in these. So we have the cherry peach cobbler on the blog and I make those into little individual cobblers for people. So when we're having our weight loss classes, I feed everybody a meal every week. And so then we'll make little desserts in these. The fall pudding can go in these. I mean, you can just serve the banana ice cream in these. So these just come in so handy. I think we have about 20 of them and, and we use them. So if you have a group of people over, it's a great way to serve things put dessert in there and then you don't have to serve up dessert when it comes time to put the dessert out. You don't have to stand there and serve 20 different servings of it. So little ramekins. These are the four ounce. I just really like them. They're the perfect size for little mini desserts. And you know, everybody likes to get their own dessert. So I'm going to give yeah. you those back. Yeah, Some folks are, I, I put the link to the shop page on after we started the feed. And, and I had to save it to that. So if you had already looked at the um, description of the video underneath the live video um, and then not refreshed, those may not show up there. So uh, I've added the uh, nutmeg, amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash nutmeg notebook uh, into the description. Um, so you can go back after the video and click on that and, and see all the items we're talking about in that gadgets and utensils page um, uh, once we're done there. Or you can look now if you wish, but it, if you might have to refresh in order for that to come up on your screen. Hey, so um, this and then, is, and then oops, sorry. also just catch up on a question that kind of relates back to when we were talking about the knives. Joni Alventi was asking about the bowls, uh, cleaning the bowls mm. uh, after we're done chopping. Uh, Joni, we just rinsed them out with very hot water, maybe a little bit of soap on the dish rag to knock all the, the lettuce and salad bits off mm -hmm. and drain it over the sink. And then I take a towel, a hand towel and dry it vigorously right away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the green patina from the salad kind of always stays in there. Um, Unless you set it out on a sunny day, set it outside yeah. and the sun will fade that chlorophyll yeah. that has yeah. caused the, the green to And happen. the bottom of our bowl, after chopping several thousand salads, you know, is a little bit rough at the bottom, but we don't ever have an issue with any fibers. So maybe drop us an email directly to Tom or Tammy at nutmegnotebook.com on that. Maybe shoot a picture to us. Uh, or you can call Corey and talk to Corey at, at, at Holland Bowl at Mill. At bowl Mill because they do guarantee the bowls for life as long as you are maintaining it. So, and that means that you need to be oiling it or waxing it because it's a, it's a wood product. And so like once a month, you need to either oil it or wax it because that preserves the wood. So you could also call and talk to Corey at Holland Bowl and um, ask him about whatever issue you're having. And I'm sure he can help you with that as well. Okay, so this is an apple core slicer, and I, I have two of these. I had three, but I gave one to our daughter, um, and I use this all the time. So I use this every day right now because I put a chopped apple in my salad every day. I don't know if you've seen the new chopped salad with the Japanese sweet potato croutons that are crunchy. You've got to see that video. It's um, That salad is amazing. So I'm using this every day to cut that apple. I love it. It just, you know, you push down on the apple and it cores it and cuts it into eighths 
very easily. Inexpensive, this is the OXO brand, and I really like the OXO products, as you can tell. So that, that's great for kids, too, because it cuts it into eighths. Sometimes I'll take it, those eighths, though, and I'll cut those again. And um, I know there, there is one that cuts it, I think, into 16, and, but I don't have that one yet. That would be hard to push through the apple. I would think this it would be. This one's hard enough. It is, isn't it? Yeah. But this, I like this one because it's metal and it's heavy duty. So I, you know, I had one that was plastic that did break one time. So the next time I got the metal because I just feel like it's stronger and more heavy duty. This is very inexpensive. This is a citrus juicer and it works great. This one will work for lemons or limes or the small like um, mandarins will work in here. And I had a plastic one and the handle broke on the plastic one. So when I replaced it, I got this metal you have one. one the hinge broke too up here. Uh, maybe so. Yeah. And how but, do you put the lemons and the limes in there? Yes, and you want when you cut them, you want to put them the cut side down. So you cut them in half and then put the cut side down and then press on it. And if it's a small one, then I might do both halves in there at the same time so that I have and more And then there's a kitchen hack tension. of doing some little slices in the back of the top of them or something. Oh, I've never done that. The one that Annie showed you, you talked about it on the video one time. I did? Gosh, yeah, you're scoring, about that. scoring the the top of it, top so of it will so get that, more juice, so that it smushes down more. Okay, and if your if your citrus isn't real cold, you will get more juice out of it. So you can put it in the microwave, not this, but the citrus, your lemon or your lime. Put it in the microwave for 10 or 15 seconds to warm it up. When those membranes in there are all cold, they're more firm and you're gonna get less juice out of them. Also, you can take and roll it on a countertop to try to break up the membranes a little bit and you'll get more juice out of it. Now, this is a Tovalo brand little mini strainer and Tom and I, we have two of these and we use these every day. They are a small, I don't know, they probably hold about two cups, but they're just perfect for putting in a little bit of strawberries or blueberries and draining them. Or you can even, it'll hold a whole can of beans if you have a can of beans that you want to drain and rinse. And so we just, we love it. We love the size of it and we just use them all the time. And I love that it's red, but I think it also comes in blue. So, and this is the same maker as my favorite spatulas, the Tovalo brand. I just, I love it. It's a great size. And then we have bigger ones, of course, as well. Then this is, oh, this has got water spots on it. But this is the Vitamix scale. I don't know how to have a kitchen and cook without a scale because not that we're weighing our food, but in order to make, um, recipes, it's so much easier to weigh things than it is to measure them out. So for instance, my banana, my quinoa banana oat muffins calls for 20 ounces of bananas and they come out consistently good when I weigh the bananas over measuring them out. And so this, this has Bluetooth capability. It, it can talk to my blender. I don't actually ever use that function, but I really like having a kitchen scale. So, and it was a special deal that Costco had last year or the year before, like in December, we were able to get it. So we have a different one that's on the, um, on the Amazon page, but you can get them. They're inexpensive and cause you don't need the Bluetooth. You don't need it to talk to your blender actually, but it's nice to have a kitchen scale because a lot of recipes you'll notice will call for so many ounces of something, you know, so many ounces of sweet potatoes or whatever it might be. And I just, I feel like that's just a more accurate way than, than the measuring because, you know, you can shove a lot of stuff, push a lot of stuff down in a cup and you might end up with more ounces of banana, mashed banana than you would if you weighed it. So that can really make a difference in how recipes turn out. Now this is also another OXO product, but this is the little mini measuring cup and this holds four tablespoons or two ounces. And I use this all the time. So if I have a recipe that calls for, you know, four tablespoons of 
vinegar or four tablespoons of mustard. This is just perfect. And we have a couple of these and I, I love it. I use it all the time. I probably use it, you know, several times a week, not every day because I don't cook from scratch every day because I batch prep, but we use it all the time. Comes in super handy, the OXO again. And then this, another OXO. That is the this, fun, that is the like the best little find, this guy right yeah, there. Yeah, and, and it's just so inexpensive. It's the OXO vegetable my, my brush. My first thought was, what? why did you buy, why is, it looked, it looked like something for the shower, you know? Just, I know, but the one that we had, we got married in 1979 and I just replaced the vegetable brush that we had. It, it's, we still have it. It was but it, it's, fiber. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was hard plastic. The whole thing was hard. Oh, that hard, yellow, that yellow one. Thing. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, I am so sick of that thing because it had a handle. It was kind of awkward to use, but you know, it was just something I never replaced. And so then I replaced it with this OXO. And what I love is look at how it fits in the palm of your hand, which it just makes it so easy to scrub the potatoes or the squash or whatever you have. And those are and stiff enough to knock off the dirt, yes. but, but not so stiff that they take the peel of the potato off, especially on the, on the, uh, the thin skinned potatoes. Yes. So, I do like, like it the better. Yukon Golds. I do too. It works. It works and it really, really well. It gets down into the nooks and crannies and gets the little grains of sand and grit out of there. It does. So. It works really well. Very inexpensive, but I just I love how it fits in the palm of my hand, and you can just run it under the water, and then I just put it in the dish drainer to dry it in between uses, and love it. It's so great. And then it goes back in the drawer and it's pretty sick. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, you guys. Okay, so. We're done with those things. Have you done those guys? I haven't. Okay. I think we're about done. Too. Do we just have? We did, and do we have the silicone? Did you do? Oh, the, I haven't done those yet. Okay. You can get one thing at a time. No, okay. Okay. So this this is the spiralizer. Now I do not use this every day, but I love the zucchini noodles, and I have a delicious Alfredo sauce recipe that it's actually it's made with cauliflower so it it no nuts and it's fantastic and I, I love it over the zucchini noodles or it's also good on a baked potato but this works so well this is very inexpensive this came with three blades but I've only ever used the one and you just put your zucchini I have a my the video the Alfredo sauce video I show you how to use it yeah yeah so, the Alfredo sauce a detailed demonstration with close-ups on how this thing works you can yeah. do a cabbage in that look at how that big blade is you, yeah and it's flat here so Tom was noticing that on their demo on the video for this they show using it to shred a, a red cabbage and we put red cabbage in our salads every week and so he was looking at, at that and saying hey how come you've never tried it? You've got it? such a good blade technique with that knife on I the cabbage though. I do. I use my chef's knife to chop up my cabbage and it only takes a few minutes and then I don't have a big a thing to wash. But this thing is really easy to wash too. It just, it comes apart and you know, you just a little bit of hot soapy water and it's done. But you can make the zucchini noodles, you can do um, beets, you can do squash, you can do all kinds of things. And it's so much cheaper to do it yourself than to buy the container of them at the store where they've already done it. And seriously, it takes like five minutes to make a huge pile of zucchini noodles. So there's really no need to buy them already pre-done because the cleanup is super fast. I mean, while they're, you know, I like to put them in the microwave for a couple of minutes and while they're in the microwave, I can have this thing washed and in the drainer. So this is just really nice to have. It works super I, I, easy. I and you can do potatoes yeah. on it too. You could spiralize potatoes and have potato noodles. Uh, a comment in general on, on the, this kitchen gadget in particular, but all of them in general. And SB, I saw your question come and go, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer it, sorry. Um, this, th this item was a solution for Tammy initially to get those spiralized noodles because as we moved ourselves away from a processed diet into a whole food plant-based diet, uh, you know, she wanted to get a noodle and how can you get, you know, a vegetable noodle? And we, a after um, research and, and development and trial and error, we came up with this as a system that works real well for us to make those. So all of these kitchen gadgets, a couple of them we've mentioned we've had for literally decades, mm -hmm. um, have settled in as you know mainstays in our culinary prep 
you know, work in the kitchen. So we've accumulated them over 40 years or discovered them over time uh, as needs arose. So it's not like it came at us all at once. If you're in the process of transitioning all of a sudden to a plant-based diet, you suddenly find yourself looking for new solutions, and that's how we came up with, with this particular yeah, device. Yeah, and as I prefaced at the beginning of the video, if you didn't catch the very beginning, none of these things are necessary to maintain this whole food, plant-based, SOS-free lifestyle. Seriously, all you really need is a cutting board and a knife. And a fork. <laughs> <laughs> and a fork, you know, and a couple of pans. And a pot. You, and, and, yeah, and a pot. And you can make everything super simple and super easy. I just happen to love gadgets and kitchen utensils because, you know, cooking is kind of a hobby for me. And I just, I love all the gadgets that you can get. Are these necessary? Absolutely not. Do you need to go out and buy all this stuff? Absolutely not. You don't. If if they fit into your budget and you have the room for, for them in your kitchen and you like the, these kinds of things, then they're great. So we're just, uh, people said that they would like to see our favorite kitchen gadgets and utensils. And so that's why we decided that we would do this video to show you the different things that we like to use in our kitchen because apparently a lot of you like kitchen gadgets as well. But like I said, they are not necessary. They're fun to have if they work in your budget and you have room for them. So I'll give you this back. Okay. Um. Then this is just a very inexpensive little, um, it's BPA free little, what's it called? Table craft, I think. Uh, little squeeze bottle. So this is just really nice if you want to do um, something a little fancier on some of your dishes when you're serving, either for yourself or company. I mean, I like pretty food. So I try to make my food pretty on a daily basis, whether I'm making it for myself and I'm the only one that's gonna see it, and, or Tom, or I'm making it for a company because they say we eat with our eyes first and I like pretty food. So you can put a cheese sauce in here, you can put a salad dressing in here, you know, you can do the Alfredo sauce in here, you can do, you know, all kinds of things in here and then you can squeeze it out. You can make a fun little design with it. You know, it's just, it's they're just fun. I have a couple of them and it's just nice to have them. I think the ones I found are I like a little six pack Oh, are they're, they? They're on the shop page, those okay. six. And I think I found that same brand. Um, yeah, and they're just, they're fun to have so that you can make some, you know, pretty food. So like on the top of a, a cream soup, you know, you can make a little design on top of it. So this is, this, Wait, you want to show these? No, I'm going to talk about them first. And then okay. you, when she first got her, her first uh, Instapot and it came with these silly... No, it didn't come with those. I bought these. Oh, you bought separate. these separate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, when I first saw them, I thought, what kind of business is that? We've got pot holders. We've got pot holders we've had for decades. We uh, have ones that my grandma And I thought these made. were kind of silly. I use these now every day. I know. Uh, because of this, this silly you know, duck, back, duck bill thing, you can pull the... I make a steamed vegetable soup uh, regularly for, for my lunch. And they oh, every pull, time you tell them that, they say, well, how do you make it, Tom? It, it's it is not blog worthy. It's... That's just steamed vegetables. Yeah. I make steamed vegetables in the Instant Pot, but these save you from being burned. You can mm -hmm. get the little bucket out of there. Now I use them when I batch cook rice. I use them to get the rice bucket out. So these I guys, use them to take things out of the microwave. Okay, yeah. To, yeah, because I can grab yeah. the edge of yeah. a bowl. And easy to wash and easy to clean. So yeah, I thought, silly, but now I have to apologize mm -hmm. and say these are like the coolest hot grippers. And then you can, you can talk about them now if you want to. <laughs> Well, what am I going to say? You've already said everything about them. They are, they're great. So this was, this came as a set. I found it on Amazon a couple years ago. And so I thought, oh, that looks interesting. So I bought them and they're pretty heavy duty. I, you know, I, I think they're great. And it came with the silicone trivet. And what's wonderful about this is because it has the gripping on it, you can open up, use it to help you open up jars that have a, a very tight lid on them. So we buy the unsweetened applesauce at Whole Foods and sometimes that 
lid is so tight on there that we can't get it even when I hold the jar and Tom tries to turn the top and so he'll just take this and put it over the lid and then turn it and it will come right off I'm gonna grab those the silicone bakeware okay. so that I can show them that really quick so you need to talk so that okay yeah you better. told him about using this we wound up using this to get lids off I the jars I just told him okay I was reading I was reading comments here um, uh, Seth, no, our house is not for sale. <laughs> you want to buy it with all the stuff in it? Well, allegedly we have Seth Rogen and uh, Post Malone on here. I know who both of those guys are. So, um, so we'll see where that goes. Um, anyway, okay, there you go. You've okay, got them. so this set is no longer available on Amazon, but we do have some links for some other um, silicone bakeware. So I, I, when I first got this, I did not like it. And I, so I actually, I gave it to Tom and said, oh, put it in the garage and, you know, you can use it to store your, I don't know, tools or whatever. They went in a plastic bag and went in the storage shed for a while. <laughs> okay. So, and I, so they come in all different sizes and shapes. So this is a nine inch square pan. And I use this to make the jammy bars. So the recipe, the recipe <laughs> for those is on the blog. This is a, a pie one, and this is for making a loaf. So you can do like a lentil loaf in here. And then of course the muffin ones. And the first thing I tried was muffins and they stuck. And I thought, what? They're not supposed to stick. Well, then I learned from one of Chef AJ's videos that you need to let whatever you bake in these, you need to let it cool completely before you try to get it out. And when it cools completely, then everything just pops out. And so when I learned that, then I said, Tom, can I have those, those silicone bakeware set back? And do you still have it? I hope you haven't like used it for something different. And so he brought them back in the kitchen and I made my uh, quinoa banana oat muffins in here, let them cool, and guess what? They popped right out. And so you can use the pie, you can use the square or the loaf, and there's lots of different colors and shapes and sizes that you can get on Amazon. And this is great for those of us who are oil-free have an oil-free lifestyle because we're not using spray-on Pam in our bakeware and to keep things from sticking. So the silicone is oven safe, it's BPA free, and it works great in the oven. Now I will tell you that on the on some of these, once you get a lot of product in them, then they can be quite wobbly, right? Because they're not real sturdy. So sometimes you might need to use a baking sheet under them to get them in and out of the oven. And the other thing that I've discovered that works really well, and I was going to tell you this, is your pizza peel. Mm -hmm. That works really well to get these in and out. I'll show oh, you what I'm talking the pizza, about. The, yeah. Yeah, it works On the really left-hand side now. Underneath the stove is where we store that thing along with the cutting boards. It doesn't take up any space. Okay, so let me show you this. So I discovered this and I forgot to tell Tom that I've been doing this and it works really well because this is a pizza peel and so this is for getting a pizza this is the top. In, and, in and out. How can you tell? Because it's beveled. Oh, to slide I see underneath. It. Yeah, yeah. And so this is for getting a pizza in and out of the oven easily. And it also works really well. Look at that, how slick is that? To get this. Oh, so it's not all wobbly. Yes, got something. and so when I'm filling this, I'll put it on top of the, I'll put the container on top of the pizza pill, and then I'll fill it with my batter, and then I'll use this to get it in the oven. And then to take it out of the oven, then I'll use a hot pad, of course, to hold this, but I'll, you know, in the oven, slide the pizza peel under it and then take it out. And so that it works really I well. I didn't know you were doing that. I know. I thought somebody had been moving my pizza peel. Did you wonder why? Yeah, I thought, what is she doing in there? <laughs> okay, so that that is just, that's the silicone. And okay. then the how? What time is it? We probably have time. To well, you talk have the about the that. last the, the the big guy here. Okay. One of your favorite kitchen 
Well, it's not a utensil. It's not a utensil or a and it's not a gadget, but we get a lot of questions. Um, people will ask whether I show a picture or we're doing a video and the stove shows, this is our scan pan and this is always sitting on top of the stove. And so people will send me an email and ask me, what is that pan on top of your stove? And so this is a scan pan, S-C-A-N. P A N. Scan and it's called pan. Scan Pen because they're made in Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. So, you want to tell him about what it's made from? Because he does all the research when I say, Oh, I saw this on Facebook or I saw this on a website. And then yeah. he'll go online well, and do yeah, research. Just a brief version is all, all really uh, well made pans will have multiple layers, usually stainless steel and then a very conductive material inside, either um, iron or aluminum, and then another layer of stainless steel for durability, and then some kind of coating. Uh, this one happens to be five layers, counting the ceramic coating layer on top. The idea is to you know, move the heat out, have even cooking, and have durability. This particular model came from Sur La Table with this particular design of lid. And it's, handles. And handles. And we chose the double handles instead of a long, Handle it's just too big for that because well, I thought it was too big for that and then I was worried about Storing it of course I, when we bought it I didn't know that it was going to go on top of the stove and stay there all the time But I was worried about that long handle and storage so we got the double handles instead and I'm glad because Especially since it sits out all the time. There's not that long handle in the way so it is not Teflon, it is ceramic, but it is so nonstick that I can, I can cook onions in it without any water. I can saute mushrooms without any water. And because we don't use oil, you know, we tell people to use either water or broth when you're sauteing, but I keep the heat low enough that I can put things in it and they don't burn. And then the natural juices will come out come out and they'll just saute in their natural juices. Also veggie burgers, I know there's tons of recipes for making them and putting them in the oven to brown them and bake them. I have never had luck doing that. They always dry they, out. They get a nice firm. But I can cook like them in fried here. Surface cooking them in here, it works nice Yeah, for that. this works great. So the trick with these pans is to not have the heat up too high on them. They like a, a medium, a flame or a medium if you have electric a medium setting and so that is the trick with them but I will preheat the pan and when it's nice and hot then I will put my ingredients in not before and as the same with the onions and the mushrooms to saute those or to put veggie burgers so I'll make my veggie patties and then I will heat that heat this pan up and then I will put the veggie patties in there and this works great now the scan pans come in different price levels and i guess that depends on the how many layers and the material that they use and the coating and the coating so there's you know there's different yeah. price there's different price points so, but we have one similar that. to this we listed on the amazon shop uh, not make notebook page um and mm -hmm. and then if you search around more you can see many more models there the one i picked out there was just the most similar one like this uh, well, this one I think is five or five and a half quart. And so the reason I wanted this yeah. is when I make sauteed vegetables, I'm making a huge quantity of sauteed vegetables. So I'll start, start out with the onions and mushrooms. And I have a blog post about this, um, how to saute vegetables without oil. I think it's called on the blog. And so I'll do the onions and the mushrooms first, and then I'll dump in like zucchini and uh, sugar snap peas and carrots and tons of greens. I will, you know, I'll have the greens will be piled up really high and then I'll work my lid on there and get my lid on there and it will just create enough steam that it will steam those greens and then I can mix those in and that goes into what we call a nourishable. So we'll have that with rice and some beans and then just a splash of balsamic vinegar on top and it, that is one of the most amazing meals. Ooh, that sounds that sounds good for dinner, actually. Well, I'm having my salad. I know he's uh, having salad. You know, I, there's a thank you for going over the scan pan. Um, there was a question here from um, JP. 
We actually had the sill pads out earlier and decided that they weren't quite a gadget or a utensil, neither is the pan. Um, oh, I'll grab them. But we do use the sill pad, and, and in particular, if you're doing something in the, in the Breville Smart Oven Air over here, you can't use parchment paper in there. It gets a little too toasty. Uh, but we do use the sill pads. They come in different shapes and sizes. Yeah, um, they and, shall. And nothing, they, nothing sticks to them. They're really beneficial for not sticking. Yeah, you have so several sill pads. I do. I have different sizes. You've got sizes. clean ones and well-used ones. So, yeah. So, well, they get stained. You know, I mean, I've had these for years. And they do last practically forever. But they do get stained. They're just going to, even if you wash them every time you use them. But um, this is the eco-friendly alternative to using parchment paper. And so they do. there's different brands. This is the Real Simple brand. And I, I do not notice any difference in these. They all seem to work the same. Now, these I just bought at Costco. They have a set that you can get, a set of four. And I thought, oh, they have the toaster oven size. But this is a lot smaller than the pans that we can use in our Breville. Because our Breville Smart Oven Air is a toaster oven, but it will hold a jelly roll size pan. And so these are too small. So mm. maybe I'll give these to Katie because she has a regular. She has a smaller one. She yeah. has a smaller oven. So yeah, so these work great. These are absolutely wonderful to use on your baking sheets. And I know that Chef AJ even uses them in the Breville Smart Oven Air because if she wants to do a large batch of um, baked potatoes, then she'll take the wire rack and she'll put one of these. I'll just show them. Okay, I'm going to answer uh, a question while you're grabbing that. Um, TS, uh, for high heat, uh, I would say use a non-coated pan. And that, since we have plant-based, we don't really use them so much anymore. But a good quality work. iron, cast iron skillet, if you're going to do any kind of high heat, all of the coated, pan, coated pans say not to do that. Um, not to do what? N no high heat on any of the coated oh, pans. Oh, no, you don't want so, to do high we, heat. I mean, we still have our nice, you know, had them for, well, I've had mine for more than 40 years, but yeah. uh, our original uh, cast iron, I forget the brand name right now, but there's a couple of, there's two common brands for those. So, so stay with the non-coated pans for high heat. Yeah. So um, when we stayed, when we were at Chef AJ's um, in the spring, she would bake potatoes in the Breville, but she would use, she would go ahead and use the air frying and dehydrating rack, but she would just line it with a Silpat mat. That way she could maximize how many sweet potatoes she could get on so each work, one. Yeah. And so she would just line it with this and then use this like a baking sheet. And she would do two racks at once of sweet potatoes in the Breville Smart Oven Air. So... So yeah, these work really well. The Silpat mats or any kind of silicone okay. mats. Right. So well, there you, you go. Thank you. You're welcome. We're out of time. I, an hour goes by so fast, doesn't it? We uh, went over a little bit over an hour, but it was really fun, you guys. So if you have any questions, um, you know, you're always free to ask in the comment section. We'll go back and read the comments. And if you have any ideas for us for our Tuesday with Tammy and Tom, you know, please send us your ideas of what you would like to hear and see. And we appreciate that. And we're glad that you're watching. So if you haven't been to the blog, go over to nutmegnotebook.com and subscribe because you get two free recipes that are exclusive only for subscribers. And one is the um, creamy delicious curry butternut squash well it's curry ginger butternut squash soup that is delicious we took it to a potluck yesterday and people were raving about it so be sure that you get that because you might want to make that for thanksgiving this year anyway that's super fun so thank you subscribe yeah. click, click the, bell. the bell smash a like smash a like <laughs> I'll tell this stuff is crazy. It is crazy, but it really helps our ratings here on YouTube. And that helps us reach more people because we're trying to be part of the grassroots effort to help people figure out how to make this lifestyle easy and sustainable because it's good for your body, it's good for the earth, and of course, it's good for the animals. Yeah. Not, so. Nana, just it's nutmegnotebook.com.
So uh, just like the YouTube channel, uh, and I'll put a we'll, we'll put, put a link in the in the description of this video. Not right now. I'm going to do it after we get off. I will update the description and I'll put a link to the blog site in the description of this video. Yeah, and to subscribe, it's free to subscribe. You just mm -hmm. click on the subscribe tab. That's the little box that's at the top, and you just give us your email, and then you will immediately you'll automatically be sent an email with a link to the PDF for the recipes. If you don't see it in your inbox, then be sure to look in your spam or junk email folder because oftentimes it ends up there. So thank you so much for watching today. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay, stay healthy, healthy one meal at a time. time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Tuesday.